we are going to start section 4.1 today in this video. And we're going to look at some implicit differentiation problems, but this time, instead of always treating y like a function of x and differentiating with respect to x, instead we are going to treat x and y as functions of a different variable, as functions of t in this case. So this was what I was mentioning in the last chapter when we talked about implicit differentiation. And so we're just going to look at the mechanics of a problem like this um, and kind of lead into then the, the full kind of application problems that we're going to be focusing on. So if we are going to treat x and y as functions of t, that means if we are using implicit differentiation, x and y as functions of t, what this means is when we differentiate And x, anytime we differentiate in x, we're going to need to multiply by a factor, the chain rule idea of multiplying, introducing a factor of dx dt. And anytime we differentiate a y, that's going to mean we're going to have to multiply by, introduce a factor of dy dt. So that's the mechanics of what we need to do here. Otherwise, this should seem familiar. So this is a nice little implicit differentiation situation. So we are starting this time by differentiating both sides of our equation with respect to t. So taking the derivative of our x squared plus y squared, and then on the right-hand side, the derivative of 5. All right, so taking our derivatives with respect to t. Derivative of x squared is 2x. I just differentiated an x, so I multiply by that factor of dx dt, right? This is this implicit differentiation implication. Plus, we are taking our derivative of y squared, so 2y. We just differentiated a y. When we treat y as a function of t, that means we multiply or introduce a factor of that dy dt. And of course, the derivative of a constant will go to 0. Now, it says find dy dt when x is 2 and y is 1, given that dx dt is 3. So essentially, we have a bunch of values to sub in. And so as we start to kind of move through this section, you're going to see there's, there's two different maybe approaches to this. One might be to first solve algebraically for dy dt and then sub in the numbers, or we can kind of do what I'm doing here, subbing in the numbers first and then solve for dy dt. I will try to do a combination of both. They're both perfectly fine, whichever seems, I think, just more natural to you. Just kind of know they're both... Um, perfectly fine here. So in this situation, I subbed in all of the given numbers first, and then that left me with 12 plus 2 dy dt was equal to 0. And then subtracting the 12, I had my 2 dy dt was equal to negative 12. And then dividing both sides by 2 there, I end up with my dy dt equaling negative 6. All right, let's take a look at another example kind of leading into these bigger problems that we're going to be looking at. And so this one says that a point moves along the graph of y equals x cubed. So let's just do a quick sketch here of something that looks reasonably close to our familiar graph of y equals x cubed. All right, so here's my x, y axis here, and here's my function y equals x cubed. Okay, so the point is moving along in such a way that it's moving in the x direction at a speed of one centimeter per second. So as this point, you know, is moving from left to right on this function, it's moving in a way that if you only focused on, so there it is kind of moving through the function. Okay, so if you only focused on like how fast it was moving to the right. 
So this might look at simply how fast it is moving to the right. If you dropped all those points down right onto the x-axis, let's, let's say, and you focus on just how fast it is moving to the right, that is what is being given as the dx dt. How fast the x is moving with respect to time is one centimeter per second. Now, we are being asked to find the speed of y, the dy dt, the vertical speed, at the instant when x is equal to 2. So let's say, um, just for, we'll put this point right here. I'm not saying this is exactly right, but let's just say, oops, for the sake of argument here. Um, here, let's do this in black, actually. All right, so let's say that this point right here um, is the point at 2. And of course, if it's on x cubed, 2 cubed would be 8. So right at that instant, so keep in mind what's happening here. We have a point that is traveling along the function, moving from left to right. Its horizontal or right movement speed is given by this one centimeter per second. What we want to know then on this one is how fast is it moving vertically? So what we are really trying to find in this situation then is if you were just to look at how fast is it rising, I want to know how fast it's rising right at that instance when x is equal to two because it's not going to be rising by a constant speed. It's moving to the right at a constant speed, but because this graph is you know, pretty, it starts off, you know, maybe if you start the origin with kind of slow growth and then more rapid growth, if we continue moving to the right at the same speed, you know, my first right movement might not take me that high, um, if I start the origin, but then my next right movement of one centimeter might take me up a lot further as I move along and the graph gets steeper. All right, so we are trying to find that dy dt, so we're trying to find that vertical speed, and it's right at the instant then when that x is equal to 2. So right when the x is equal to 2, so at that instant. All right, so what we do is we start off with our equation that relates x and y, which is y equals x cubed. And mechanically, we're going to do essentially what we did in the opening example. We are going to differentiate both sides with respect to time. So when I take the derivative of y, you can think to yourself, oh, well, that's kind of like just getting a 1, if you will. You just differentiated a y, so you multiply by a factor of dy dt. On the right-hand side, derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. You just differentiated an x, so you multiply by your dx dt. Now, the nice thing about this particular example is we're already isolated for that which we're trying to solve, which is dy dt. And then it's going to be 3 times at the instant when x is equal to 2 is what I'm interested in. Given that, the speed of x is that one centimeter per second. So what we have is that the speed in the y direction, how fast it's moving up vertically at that instant, is 12 centimeters per second. And so just observe if you would pick, let's say like way back at x equals 1, if you only would have had to sub 1 in there, the vertical speed back at x equals 1, so maybe back here somewhere, let's say, um, that just would have been then 3. It was only moving vertically at a speed of 3 centimeters per second. So it makes sense, though, if, I, if I'm moving right in a constant direction um, speed, if I'm moving to the right at a constant speed, that vertical speed is going to get much more rapid as the graph became much more steep. All right, so these are our opening examples that kind of build into our related rates problems. So let's just briefly talk through these steps and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at uh, more examples in the next video. 
So many times what we're going to start with is going to involve drawing a picture. Um, and on that picture, I'm kind of a, a fan of only labeling the numbers on the picture that correspond to constant values that aren't changing. And we'll kind of see this as we go along. Um, so we draw a picture. And then these these are kind of our general steps for pro for problem solving. But you know, if you have something you can draw, draw it. Uh, then we're going to label what we know and what we don't know. That's sort of the general step. Now here specifically, anything that's changing needs to be like changing with respect to time. Um, that's going to be labeled with a derivative. So quantities that are changing um, are going to be labeled as derivatives. Um, so let's even get more specific than that. So they're going to be um, labeled as, um, well, no, let's just say as, so they're going to be labeled as derivatives. And then up above here, so let's say, for example, things like, you know, dx dt, how fast x is changing with respect to time, or dy dt, how fast y is changing with respect to time. Um, maybe it'll be angles, d theta dt, maybe for some sort of angle that we label as theta. So anything that is changing with respect to time is going to be labeled as a derivative. And so these kinds of derivatives, obviously, um, with respect to time. Another thing we have to be on the lookout for, if the quantity is increasing, then that is going to be given by a positive speed or derivative. But if it is a quantity that is decreasing, and sometimes we have to infer this from the problem, we may have to know to label that derivative as a negative speed because it's actually a quantity that is decreasing. So that's going to be pretty crucial. Then we're going to need an equation that relates the data. Um, the last example that we had, you know, it was just y equals x cubed, right? A lot of times, though, it'll be a, a, a geometric relationship, maybe something with a trig ratio in particular for angles. So some sort of equation that relates the data. Um, and then we're going to differentiate the whole equation with respect to time. So this is what we already have kind of warmed up doing. So every time you differentiate... Um, Let's just say a variable, obviously a variable that's not t. Um, so for example, an x, a y, a theta, things like that. You have to introduce a factor of d, whatever that variable is, dt. So you have to introduce, just like what we did in the first two examples, you'd introduce a factor of dx dt, or you introduce a factor of dy dt, or you introduce a factor of d theta dt. Okay, so that's what we have to do by rules of implicit differentiation. And then our last step here is then going to be to um, substitute in and solve for the unknown quantity. And so then you kind of have that choice, like do you solve for the unknown quantity and sub in the numbers or sub in the numbers and solve, but sub in the numbers and solve for the unknown quantity. Sometimes there may be something extra additional to find, so always make sure you've answered the questions. All right, so when we come back in the next video, we'll get into some more um, kind of interesting examples here of related rates problems.